Is it true that salt kills yeast? Usually, in most recipes, they advise to put the yeast away from the salt. Is it really a myth? Or there is some truth in all that? What effect does salt have on bread? Does it really kill the yeast? For that, we need to know which is the right amount of salt that we need to add to a dough. The usual is between 1.5% to 2%, which means 15 to 20 grams salt per kilo flour. So let's go with this experiment. We're going to make three equal loaves. They will be very similar, but the only thing that I'm going to change is the amount of salt in each one. The first one is going to have no salt at all. Then the second one is going to have 2% salt. And the last one, an exaggerated amount of 10% salt. And I will make them all the same way. Same mixing time, same proofing time, and same baking time. Let's start with the unsalted dough, the 0% dough. In a bowl, I put the yeast. Now I add the water and mix it. And since this one has no salt, let's go with the flour. Let's mix it all again till we get a nice dough. Looking good. Let's go with the next one, the 2% salt. Again, we go first with the yeast. And now I add the water. Mixing. And now here comes the salt. And now the flour. It's looking like a dough. Fine, we've got it. And finally, let's go with extreme dough, 10% salt. As before, in the bowl, I add the yeast. The water. Mix it. And now here comes the salt. And now the flour. Let's mix all again. Everything well combined. And here's the dough. Now, I'm going to cover them and let them here to ferment at room temperature. Once the water comes in contact with the yeast, they become active and start feeding on the starches in the flour, which are the sugars, producing CO2, which are gases, alcohol, and among other things. On the other hand, salt has a dehydrating effect, so the higher its concentration, the harder it will be for the yeast to stay moist, and that will make them work slower. That is, it makes the fermentation take longer. This way you can better control the speed of the process. And that, in bakery and in many other things more, ends up benefiting the final product, as it brings much more aroma and flavor. It was really fun to watch how the doughs fermented, right? So now it's time to shape them in these little molds. So let's go first with the 0% salt. Look how it has risen, full of air. Let me unmold it here on top of the counter. Now I give it some tension, and it's looking good. Now put in the mold. Okay, let's move on to the second one, 2% salt. It looks full of air too, and let me put it on the counter too. Let's give it some tension. Now the shape looks like a bread. And let me put it in the mold too. And finally, here we go with the 10% salt, which didn't grow that much. And it's kind of sticky. Okay, on the counter. And let's try to give it some shape too. Okay, well, this is not that bad. Here goes into the mold. So now I have the three loaves already shaped. And now I need to let them proof. Let's see what happens now. The fermentation gases are trapped by the gluten network, forming small holes in the dough, which after baking, we will call them cran. Also, as you are watching right now, the dough that does not have salt is rising again faster. That is precisely because the yeast are not dehydrated. And now the loaves are ready to be baked. Let's preheat the oven at 430 degrees Fahrenheit for around 15 minutes. Here is happening something very interesting. The salt in normal quantities, 2%, will strengthen the gluten network, making it more resistant, so we will obtain a better development and volume of the bread, which is just what you're watching right now. And finally, here I have the three loaves ready. But is it a myth or not that salt kills yeast? Actually, salt in right amounts can help improve the appearance and flavor of the bread. Obviously, if it is added in large quantities, in addition to making the bread extremely salty, <laughs> oh, water, it could inhibit the growth of the yeast. But if used in the right proportions, the opposite is true. It helps the yeast to work better and the bread to gain in volume. In addition to this notorious difference in volume between them, you can see also that the crusts are different too. 
The Maillard reaction, or better known as caramelization, occurred in three different ways. In the bread with a lot of salt, it slows down or practically cancels the enzymatic process by which the yeast feeds on the sugars, ending like this, white or pale. And on the contrary, in the bread without salt, lacking it, the yeast consumes almost all the available sugars, leaving it less browned compared to the one with the right amount of salt. 2%. And finally, salt is a natural preservative, which keeps the bread in good conditions longer. And since I have this bread in my hand, why don't we see the crumbs? first sight, I see that it's just a cooked dough, no fermentation at all. It's too dense, too compact, and too salty. I'm not going to try this bread. I'll leave it for you. And now it's time for the 0% salt. If you see it like this, it looks like a real bread. But if you compare it with the other one, with the 2% salt, this is a little bit more smaller. But let's try it if it has some taste at all. It's not taste. And it's also a little bit more drier. The, the crumb is a little bit more drier. Um, where's the taste? Ah, and there. And here I have the 2% salt, which is the regular amount of salt that you should use. The crumb is a little bit more moist and it should be a little bit more tasteful. Let's try it. Yeah, this is a real slice of good bread. So we have seen that the extremes not always give us the best results. So 2% salt is the right amount for a bread. But what about the yeast and the salt? Does the salt kill the yeast finally or not? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about sourdough bread and sourdough starter, I encourage you to check the link on the description. And remember, this masterclass was specially designed for you.